Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Canadian Gamers. I'm here with Steven, who will be silent. Oh boy. He's, he's really lively this morning. He's always so chipper and happy. And I'm pretty much a zombie. I just got back from Baltimore, which was uh, pretty cool. Pretty cool. I took my uh, gang out for uh, Halloween. We went to a haunted house and I basically paid for like uh, two or three sessions so we kept them in there longer running around screaming and stuff it was uh, absolutely hysterical we had a really good time other than that it's just been school 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 but the good news is school is coming to an end and I'm very happy about that I basically have no readings to do today instead it's all projects 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 and more projects so that's essentially what I got to do as soon as I'm done with this. I've got an HR project that I got to put together that's due for like two weeks or something. But we also have a live case, which is like a consulting uh, session. Plus we have an accounting presentation that's due and we have a marketing presentation that's due. So all around lots and lots and lots and lots of stuff coming up. But enough about me. What have you been doing I've been doing nothing, actually. Nothing at oh, all. Nothing nice. to tell a story about. Just basic life stuff. Lots have of fun. Been, have you been playing anything? Nope. Wow, what's going on here? I have not been playing anything. No Pokemon. I, I started Crystal, played it for like an hour maybe. I just tried to do. A, I'm trying to do a Nuzlocke run of it, but it just—it's not really keeping my uh, attention right now. So I've been basically uh, watching wrestling, watching hockey, even watching basketball from time to time. And I've picked up a book recently. I've been reading a book. Not much. Which one? It's a book by an author called Sean McIndoo. He's a hockey writer. He just wrote a... He's kind of like a hockey writer, but a comedian hockey writer. He just wrote a book called The uh, History of the NHL, The World's Best Sport, The World's like Worst League or something like that. So I've been reading that. It's a lot of fun. And that's pretty much it for me. Wow, we're both really, uh, really exciting this week, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, no. Okay, great, super. So, what's on the menu, my friend? Yeah, I've had I have uh, two topics for you. Basically, that's it. I, I'm guessing you didn't bring anything uh, anything else. So, the first one I've told you about, and I want you to summarize it for us so we can have a discussion about it. Okay, I actually do have something else um, that I want to speak about. Um, but, uh, first things first, is I'm looking. So, uh, I don't know how much you guys know about this, but a while ago, uh, it was announced that, I forget how he pronounced his name, Tommy Tolerico or something like that, was working on... Um, basically, like, in Television 2, the revenge of the Intellivision. And if you don't remember what the Intellivision is, it was a really, really old uh, system from back in the day, from like the early 80s, late 70s, that, um, that was just a, a quite powerful console for its day. It's really funny, like how people are like, oh, it's a 16-bit console and all this jazz. I'm like, yeah, okay, not in the way you think. So anyways, the, the company, it's, it's back and they just announced the Intellivision Amico, which looks like vaporware at this particular point in time. There's a four, four and a half minute trailer, something like that, that's online, that basically introduces you to the console. And the console is going to be uh, an Android-based console, it looks like. It doesn't look like it's going to be anything special. Maybe, maybe a Linux-type uh, box. <clears throat> the it's just they just have like the concept of what it looks like it looks like a child's toy and that seems to be what they're going for they're going for uh, games that will be only rated E and E10 plus so there's not going to be any M rated games or stuff like that they say that every game will be console exclusive to the Amico 
However, they're showing Android and Apple, uh, like Play Store and uh, the App Store. So that means that, that basically tells me that they're basically going to have mobile games that are going to be ported over to this thing and probably have like some sort of contract with the people to say that these games will be exclusive to uh, to the Amico. Um, and no one really cares to be really honest like i don't see anybody really caring about that in when i say that i mean like playstation 3 people uh sorry playstation 4 switch owners and xbox one owners i don't see them like giving a crap about that uh the controllers themselves look very much like the original in television controllers which is very perplexing to me but if everything is touchscreen and both of the uh, controllers it comes with two controllers are touchscreen that it makes perfectly makes perfect sense since they're basically mobile games so you know it, it that will work just fine because the two controllers basically look like two iPhones except they have a big uh, circle pad at the bottom of them and there's some tactile buttons on the side but other than that they're basically two little phones that it comes with so again this seems very very um, you know seems very very simple in design there is a whole bunch of games that are coming out it's got trophies it's gonna have online leaderboards wi-fi built in um it's gonna have arcade like it's gonna have a bunch of classic games basically let's put it that way so <clears throat> they're calling it like reimagined i'm just watching the video right now so there's gonna be in television classics that are remade there's gonna be atari classics that are remade there's going to be I Magic classics that are remade and they just start going through like a whole bunch of them like Tropical Angel, Super Burger Time, Moon Patrol, etc. Even R-Type is on there and they're all saying like you know console exclusive, console exclusive, console exclusive and that's all fun and dandy um, but it's just I don't know it's weird it says that it's gonna launch with over 20 brand new exclusive games and then they go into the team, and there's some real heavy hitters here. Like I said, Tommy Tallarico has been part of the, the industry for 30 years. Uh, the one that, the, the biggest surprise to me was Perrin Kaplan. Now, that name you should remember. I do not. Well, you're the worst. That, that's all I can say. You're the worst. Because she basically helped launch in North America the Super Nintendo the N64, the GameCube, the Wii, and the DS. And that's when they switched from um, where she was situated, which I think was in Seattle. Anyway, no, I don't know. Ugh, I, it's been too long. Anyways, whatever. She she switched from wherever Nintendo's old like headquarters was, and they, they when they moved, she didn't move with them. And so she was like their head of marketing and stuff like that. Anyways, and the list just goes on and on and on. And, and it's just filled with so many heavy hitters. I was, I was actually, to be honest, I was shocked. Like every person working on this has like 25, 30 years experience. Now, I'm kind of surprised. Anyways, it comes out 10, 10, 2020. And I laughed about that because... It's like, you know, you don't even have the machine yet. It's just a concept. And yet you already have a release date. And you have, I, like, you have games that are in development, but you don't show a single game. You're just showing box arts and stuff like that. So, I don't know. What did you think of this? Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm still puzzled by why people seem to attach importance to like the Intellivision and Coleco name and stuff like that even Atari these days doesn't seem like it means anything anymore uh, the first thought I had was that this doesn't seem like a Coleco chameleon type of scenario this, te this seems like it's much more actually organized and might actually come out uh, the games you mentioned don't seem like they will take many long to develop so and they were also mentioning that it was going to be like three dollars to eight dollar type of games they right, want this right. to be a family uh, console type uh, the first thing i thought was that this at least doesn't seem to be like a scam like the chameleon ended up to be like it seemed like they actually have a prototype and they actually are planning to release this with a clear vision in mind having said that i like i said i don't see this being successful at all i just don't take this is basically a nostalgia item 
for something that very little people have nostalgia about and they want this to be a family thing and the problem is like this i believe launched like in 78 or 79 right the original in television it launched in the 70s so for you to have been like nostalgic about you had to be like eight nine or ten years at that time which would put you around 40s or the 50s right now which means if you have a family if you have kids your kids would probably be in the in the teenagers right now or even closer to 20 maybe and i don't think you're buying them that console you're buying them a ps4 or an xbox at that in this scenario so i don't see the situation with this and the, the last thing i want to mention well not the last thing but the fr the other thing that really caught my eye were the controllers those look horrendous like i think there's a reason why we don't see those circle pad things and i never myself had seen or hold an intellivision controller in my hand so maybe you can clear the clear the air were those things actually comfortable do these work well with like platformers because let's be honest they say that all we will see in that is 2d games 2d games 2d games can you control a platformer with a, a circle pad and touch like the touch screen thing is not that big of a deal because there are tactile tactile buttons on the side so i imagine if you have a simple platformer with only a jump button that will work but that circle pad thingy there what the heck is that like does that control well no, and it never did. Um, but remember that back in the day that there were no platformers. So, I mean, yeah, you but had... I imagine there will be now. Oh, yeah, of course, now. But now it's going to be touchscreen. You're not going to use that, that disc for anything. It's all going to be just like for inputs, like, you know, like say on a menu and stuff like that. That's pretty much all that's going to be used for. And, and I'm incorrect. There were um, some platformers like Pitfall and stuff like that. But the Intellivision controller was, basically there was an overlay that went on top of it because it had numbers like a, um, mm -hmm. like a, a dial tone type thing. And you just put a panel over it and one button would be to fire, one button would be something yeah, else. And you held it in such a way. like uh, tactile a bit, no? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the problem I have. Like with a touchscreen, <clears throat> there's no tactile feedback. So jumping is, I don't know. No, I don't no, but man, just, just again, <clears throat> it's your phone. It, it, it's, it's as simple as that. It's your phone. Like, you're going to hold it exactly in portrait, just like you did. Or you're going to hold it in horizontal landscape mode. But instead of, like, your right thumb being over the screen, your right thumb will be over a um, over a circle pad. That's it. It's it's legitimately going to be that. It's not, it's not going to win any awards for design. It's going to well, be clunky. That's a very and, uh, weird choice. It is. If there's one thing keeping, like gamers away from mobile phones it's the controls like the controls on mobile phones are never never going to be as good as tactile so if you're launching a console i don't know why you would put yourself at that disadvantage especially if you're aiming for i think 140 or 180 the, the worst thing in that range uh, launch price at yep. least give us like proper controllers that was one of my biggest problem with this when i saw that especially since i know it's nostalgia but kids are not going to know this and even the families like i said like i'm 33 years old and i never saw one of these and my kids i don't think would ever care for that stuff so who are they aiming uh, this console at well that's it <clears throat> and and that's my big thing with this is like i understand fully what they've done in terms of the controllers and stuff like that if you were aiming this at 40 year olds but you're not, because if you're aiming this solely at 40-year-olds or 50-year-olds, why in the hell are you limiting the games to E10 Plus and, and being all family-friendly and this and that and everything else? Like, I don't get it. I just don't get it. But what's bizarre is the team. The team that's working on this, like, every one of them are industry veterans. Like, they know what they're doing. These people are not stupid. So I'm wondering if this is just something that they're like, oh, yeah, okay, whatever. Just put our names to it and whatever. Or are they actually, like, heavily invested in this? And if they are heavily invested in this, then I'm very perplexed. Because I don't quite understand this. It's clear there is no prototype right now. It's clear there's no nothing. It was a mock-up design. Now this is not this is not 
going to be the chameleon. That I assure you, because the people that are on board this are all industry veterans. It's not like last time where you had like one person type of deal. This is this is the real deal. So I'm not so concerned about that, but I still think like I don't get it. It's like have all these people lost their minds? I'm I'm a little confused by this. And what about the television name? Why do people keep bringing those old names? Uh, no, it's just because it, it's it's all they have left. Like it, it's you can't buy Nintendo, you can't buy Sega, you can't buy Sony, you can't buy Microsoft. So what else do you have But left? Why not You've call got... it just the Amico? Does that Intellivision because no, it's, brand it's just actually because... adds anything? Yeah, you have for to pay sure. for the license. So yeah, yeah, no, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure, absolutely. Like that's the thing. An unknown name will never have the goodwill that an existing brand has. Never. So even if it's if it's like you know, uh, Blockbuster, they could have called it Blockbuster's uh, Amico or something like that. It would, it would still have greater influence, regardless of how old that brand is. It will still carry some weight. Now the question is, when I say some weight, emphasis here on the sum, it's not going to be much. And and the license holder knows that, so they probably paid just a few thousand dollars. It's not like they paid like five million dollars to get the license for this because there's not enough goodwill to to garner that. You know, it's not like you're going and saying like, okay, it's the Apple Amico, and it's going to cost you like eight hundred million dollars to slap the Apple name on that or more type of thing. But yeah, in business, sure. Like typically legacy brands like that will still hold some goodwill, which goodwill just simply means the, uh, like the, all the nostalgia stuff you're talking about, you know, it's like those, it's like the branding. It still carries some weight, but in, in television's case, I mean, we're starting to scrape the bottom of the barrel here. You had ColecoVision, you had in television, you have Atari. I mean, what the hell like we're getting we're getting we're getting to the bottom of the barrel here there's really not that many more companies that you could do this to where it would be economic like just not even economically sensible but just logical even in television like really you're scratching the surface it's almost yeah. like coming out with the vectrex yeah. 2018 where it's like okay it wasn't that successful to begin with you know yeah it's just like I just think of me as an example. I'm like what you'd probably consider a hardcore gamer ish. I'm the guy who consumes games, who consumes like the media and games. And I know next to nothing about the Intellivision, the Coleco name. Like Atari is the one that I know the most because I pro it probably was the most successful out of the three. Yeah, in, absolutely. In general. But even that, I've never actually hold an Atari controller or seen one. So, like. I imagine the general public will have absolutely zero idea what the Intellivision name is, especially the younger audience. And even then, like, what I, I just don't don't understand this thing because I should know these and I don't. So. Yeah, no, man. I mean, like I say, I I, I don't understand this. the The thing that I find the most perplexing, though, are all those heavy hitters. I don't quite understand why you would associate your name with these products. Well, this product rather. I, I'm yeah, I'm a little confused. Okay, so I think we've covered the uh, Amico enough. Now I want to bring my second topic to you, and I, this is another reason I wanted you to because I, I probably you can probably answer some of those uh, questions I have. It's about at games. Are you familiar with at games? Not at all. Okay, so at games, like I, I'm not either, but from what I've gathered, they are a company that releases plug and play. Uh, they've released a ton of plug and play machines over the years. Yes, they have. And like uh, they were, in, they were supposed to release. I believe the Sega, Sega was supposed to release like a similar situation, like to the NES and SNES Classic. And they mm -hmm. were the original uh, company be behind that, but now they aren't anymore because of the, of their reputation. Re reputation, mm, but, reputation, yeah. yeah, exactly. And they've recently released a system called the Bandai Namco Blast, or it's maybe it ha it's the Pac-Man Bam Bandai Namco Blast. So it's like a controller. It's basically a six-button controller, like type of that looks like the Genesis ones with a dongle and an HDMI cable. 
and it comes with either eight it comes with eight games and the games i have them right here it's 29.99 us i think it's 20 dollars at walmart so that's probably around 35 40 dollars canadian and the games included are dig dug galaga galaxian mappy pac-man sky kid tower of draga and Xevious. And there's a Walmart exclusive one, and I believe that one has Pac Mania and in, instead of Tower of Druaga. But it might be another game, but I know it has Pac Mania instead. And the controversy with that one is that I don't know if you're familiar with John Hancock. Yeah, He's, sure. Okay, so he got a review unit sent to him, and he gave it a pretty good review because he reviewed it, and the products inside were the arcade, uh, arcade ROMs, and he thought that was a pretty good product. But what turned out was that he what what was what he was sent and what's in store is not the same. The products contained in store has the NES ROMs. Okay. Appar <laughs> so apparently, I, like I said, I'm, I don't know much, but apparently the arcade version of these games are much superior, and that's probably right. I don't know. You can probably clarify that. But he was sent a, a, a unit with the arcade ROMs, but the actual uh, units that are in stores contain the NES ROMs, but if you see the back of the boxes, it, it's screenshots of the arcade ROMs. So people are saying that ad games are misleading their the cons the customers right right here, and like it's a big controversy right now. Like ad games is not popular and has not done anything any favors to its brand. Uh, you can comment on that later. My only question is, I assume like there's basically next to none or no difference in cost for ad games in putting the nes or the arcade roms on on there so i have i was wondering why the heck would somebody do that uh unless the arcade roms were significantly larger which i can't imagine not for that time period that would be the only way because it would increase the cost if they had to have a larger flash storage. But, I mean, we're talking, these are old games. So I don't see it being, I don't be, I don't see it being significant enough to do that. So to me, I don't get it. I don't understand it. it was it licensing? Like, did they not have the licensing to this? I don't think so. <laughs> Because something, it just doesn't make any sense. Like, why would you put inferior versions of the game? That doesn't make any sense. Because they, like, like, I, I, like I told you, they sent John, like, an actual unit that looks exactly like the retail bill. It has the boxes. Everything is the same, except on it, it has the arcade versions. But that's not in stores. Like, <laughs> and are the arcade versions really that superior? Well, yeah, back then, yeah. They will be quite a bit superior. Just because, like, there was more more RAM available, the 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 dedicated chipset was str way stronger than the NES. That that was that was the whole appeal, right? That's why you went to the arcade. Mm -hmm. But from a like a, from a logic standpoint, I don't quite understand this. Uh, I don't know. I, it's almost as if like someone just made a screw up and was like, "Whoops, we installed the wrong ones in the." Uh, it, but but I don't know. It's it's fishy. It's really fishy because they because they sent him one with a different like like it has the same games just different yeah, versions. Yeah. <laughs> exactly like the uh, the the one they sent to. I think John wasn't the only one. I think they sent all the reviewers. I could be 100 percent wrong on here. Maybe it's just John, but he got a review copy and it was all eight games were the arcade versions. So then when he heard about this, because the thing is. This could have could have had the potential to ruin his reputation too, because he gave the the unit a yeah, glaring, yeah, a a glaring good, review. Yeah, exactly. So then, what he went, he did another video. He went and purchased, uh, I think, the Walmart unit or whatever the case may be, and he reviewed it again. And he was absolutely disgusted by this. And not only are those the NES run, but from what he said. They uh, looked and run like crap compared to the actual NES ROMs, which is already an inferior version to uh, to begin with. But then that that part there is like I always find, but you 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 say you can tell like that. I I always find people are a bit nitpicky when it comes to uh, to things like that. I never notice the the difference when they say like the, the game the ROMs don't work like nearly as well as the NES versions. Maybe they're they're correct. I never see it, but like it, just the fact that 
it's the NES ROMs instead of the arcade ROMs. Like he basically like he, if you have to free time, watch those videos because he was he was not happy about it. And it, it like it, it, good thing he noticed uh, another guy. I think he's called Mad Little Pixels, like uh, told him about this. Like nobody was mad at him, like everybody un understood. But if nobody would have told him about this, like he he would have looked like a uh, phony uh, for a while because he yeah, would, yeah for sure no that's really messed up man that's really really messed up and i don't understand i don't understand the logic <clears throat> i just don't get it like what was he going for what were they like what was the i don't know I, this is really bizarre man this is really really bizarre so i don't really have too much to add on that but i do have something else i'd like to talk about though um, if you're okay with that, yeah, if go you're ahead. Done. Um, I don't know if you saw, but we got the final list. Dun, dun, dun. Oh yeah, that's right, that's right. Yeah, and um, I am so buying one day one, man. Uh, <laughs> so we got the final I'm list. I'm not for sure the if you're if you're. Uh, are you are you serious or not? Uh, I'm not sure. No, I'm sarcastic. I'm okay. being sarcastic. <laughs> um, so here we go. I mean, some of these, from a historical standpoint, if you can't get them elsewhere, some interesting, there are some interesting takes, okay? Um, and I thought of this while I was in Baltimore. I was like, you know what? Stephen and I spoke about this, and I have a much better idea than what we were saying. Because we were talking about, like, you know, like, oh, it should have, well, I was saying, like, it should have, like, Resident Evil 2 and Metal Gear Solid. And you were you were countering by saying, yeah, but there's, like, you know, yeah. better versions out there and so on and so forth. And absolutely, you're absolutely right. Um, but then I was thinking, I was like, you know what? It would be pretty cool to have, like, like, if... If they wanted to just make this one and it's only going to have 20 games, they're going to have to be very select with those 20 games. So I was like, why not do something kind of unique and have like like the early games? Not necessarily. And I know I know that the, like some people would be like, oh, this is stupid. But like, why not have like Resident Evil, like the original unaltered unedited resident evil that was never released in north america like why not have that like the japanese version the original 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 japanese version of resident evil the one that's all with the head and all that crap um so i i started to think about that like that could be a unique way of reminiscing about PlayStation, like the original Tomb Raider, the original Tekken, you know, those those sorts of things. Um, but anyways, that they obviously didn't do that. Um, the the game. <laughs> Here's the list. We get Battle Arena Toshinden, which is okay. I mean, that's that was like a launch title, so that's kind of funny. You get Cool Borders 2, Destruction Derby, Final Fantasy 7, Grand Theft Auto, Intelligent Cube, Jumping Flash, Metal Gear Solid, Mr. Driller, Odd World, Abe's Odyssey, uh, Rayman, Resident Evil, Director's Cut, Revelations, Persona, Ridge Racer Type 4, Super Puzzle Fighter 2, Turbo, Siphon Filter, Tekken 3, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six, Twisted Metal, and Wild Arms. Now, that's not a horrible um, assortment of games. It really isn't. It's just that there are many, many heavy hitters that are not here, including the likes of Crash, of course. If I had to choose between Crash and Spyro, I would have put the original Crash myself. Uh, I would have, like I said, I, I think I would have mixed this up and put like the original Ridge Racer and, Did and you things like was that. Was Crash Team Racing on the list? Nope. Oh, okay. I thought that was one of the, that was on the list. Nope. Wow. Yeah, Crash does not make an appearance whatsoever. Um, Gran Turismo, which a lot of people were hoping for, which I knew was not going to be on there because of licensing, uh, is not on here. There's a lot not on here. I would have put Legend of Dragoon because Sony owns it. Um, and that's a game that really didn't get much... Uh, I don't know. I, I found it was like overshadowed by all of its peers it would have been nice to revisit this and i know none of the square enix uh you know big heavy hitters are on here with the exception of final fantasy 7 but that's okay oh sorry i don't i don't really mind that so much but yeah looking at um 
looking at this list, it's like, well, whatever. I mean, if if the system was like sixty bucks, I'd say go for it. But if I'm not mistaken, isn't it like a hundred? Yeah, it's a hundred US. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I I'm I'm done. Thank you. I'm good. Not interested. It just because like, there's just not enough. I, it's cool to see Metal Gear Solid on there, but just I was surprised. It's not, that, like, not enough. since we saw Metal Gear and Resident Evil, I thought maybe there was a chance for Castlevania Symphony of the Night, even if it was just recently released on the PS4. But I guess. I guess that it would too me- that was too much of a PlayStation Classic to be on the PlayStation Classic. Yeah, to be really honest, there's so, like Intelligent Cube. Seriously, <laughs> like I just I don't get it. When you, when you think of the games that were on this system, like but to even, be fair, even Super Puzzle Street Fighter instead of like Street Fighter Alpha Three or whatever, like yeah, that, that, yeah, that yeah. would have been awesome. Yeah, anyways, it's just when you, like, I have all my PlayStation games just above me on my desk. It's just perfect. They're all lined up. Uh, And, like, I look here, and there are so many classic games, man. Like, I'm just, like, whatever. Like, for me, it's, like, whatever. (laughs) It is what it is. I I don't know why anyone would be super excited about this. I'd actually like to hear your... uh, your comments in uh, well in the comment section. I'd really like to hear what you guys think because for me this is kind of like pfft, whatever. I'm not. Uh, I don't really care anymore. There's there's so many games. I mean, it's so ridiculous that like Square Enix could actually team up with Sony and release like the Square Enix PlayStation Classic. That's how many bloody awesome RPGs and stuff like that that company released on on that system. It would be awesome. And you know, that reminded me of a few other things. Like, God, I wish Parasite Eve would make a comeback. That was a really excellent hybrid, like, survival horror slash RPG. You never... Did you ever get into that? Uh, No, I never played it. Yeah, I think you'd like that. It was a really unique take on the survival horror genre. Something the likes of which, like, never really saw again... And I miss that era. I really do. It, like, they were so experimental. Like, the Super NES and PlayStation 1 days, they were, they like, were doing all this weird crap. Even, um, even Capcom, like, during the Dreamcast days, Capcom was so experimental with their games. And it just seems like now there's a lot of uh, rehash. And speaking of modern games, I'm surprised that you're not playing Red Dead. Yeah, actually, I am. Oh, well, then you lied to me. Yeah, I wanted to talk about this. I play, but I, that's 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 the thing. Like, uh, I saw Red Dead Redemption when I played it on the 360. Like, I fell in love with it, and that was surprising to me because I've never been a fan of uh, sandbox open world games. But there's there's a few exceptions here and there, and I really really loved Red Dead Redemption. So this was announced. The review came up, and they got tens. Like, it got a lot of glory glor- glor- reviews. So I, I I picked it up. My PlayStation 4 is now finally uh, fixed. I can actually put disc in there, and I had no choice but to uh, to buy the physical version of this because it's a hundred gig, and that would have taken me like a week to download that here. So I did that. the The, the thing right now is like I I barely played it, man. I played it for maybe two hours maximum, and I'm yesterday I was like sitting on the couch the kids were in bed and I and I was trying to motivate me to play the game and usually that's a problem when you do that usually games yeah you, you, and the, the thing is like they went and I, I'll play a bit more and hopefully maybe that I won't mind it. they went for an uh, ultra super duper realistic feel with this game like so much that it's actually like and I've heard this like it's I don't understand why games sometimes try to be this realistic. There's a reason we play games, and it's really, really annoying. Like, and I, I'm terrible at giving examples. There's a super great video on this done by uh, Jim Sterling, I believe his name is. He did this mm-hmm. like last week, week before, called like the. He called it something like uh, super realistic in games, or it, I'm I'm messing up the title, but. It's all about how games sometimes are sacrifice fun for realism, and this is what's happening so far with me in uh, in Red Dead. Like I remember in Red Dead Redemption, when you would kill an animal, you could you would press triangle or whatever the the button was Y on the Xbox 360, and you would uh, 
like what's the word when you uh, take an animal and take the meat off and all that stuff no oh, you'd skin yeah, it you'd skin basically. it and it would take like okay. five seconds and boom but in this game like so far you have to kill and it takes forever to kill them they're really hard to track and then you have to bring them to your horse bring them back and then skin them somewhere and it takes a long time and apparently farther in the game you have there's different types of deer or whatever the animal you, there's pristine types and if you want to hunt them you need to be careful you need to hit their weak points like three or four times before you kill them if you hit not the weak points you'll ruin the meat stuff like that if you have like your guns like you can i think you only have they will be on your horse and if you get off your horse and you forget to grab them off your horse you can't have them if you want to switch guns like it's the controls are really really complicated for some reason because you always instead of just like i, I know it's real realistic like to have to put your gun in your holster grab another gun from your back and then like it's it's all realistic stuff if you want to drink coffee you need to brew it before you drink it you need to shave yourself you need to constantly take baths Uh, you need to watch what you're eating, which so far I haven't had a problem because I haven't played. But it seems like, man, this guy is like a cowboy. All he does is physical exercise. There's no way eating a few snacks would get this guy overweight. Like this seems a bit like ridiculous. Like this is like <laughs> what they did with Grand Theft Auto San Andreas or whatever the case was. When you like you could get overweight if you ate too much. Like. There's no way this guy's gonna get overweight in like this t game takes part in 1899, I believe. Okay. Back in those days, you would not get overweight unless you were rich and stuff like that. Like this guy, like is super, super, like always doing stuff. Like I, I found that ridiculous. So basically, like it seems like it's a bit uh, way too much so far. But like I said, I've only played two hours. But I'm getting a lot of like I can't motivate myself to actually play more. It hasn't hooked me at all and I'm really weird because when I read the reviews and when I saw the scores and remembering how much I loved the original I was like man this has the potential to be game of the year for me and I'm a bit disappointed because I paid like 80 80 whatever dollar 90 dollars with tax at this game and I might not even enjoy it and I should have instead spent that 90 dollars on Spider-Man which I probably would have like really loved yeah i uh, okay i i okay that's interesting that's really interesting spidey is the one that like gosh darn it man i wish i wasn't in school right now like i would be all up in that but school's going really well by the way i'm um i'm averaging about an a a plus which is like wow i did not expect that so very happy about that but i do miss i won't lie i miss um i miss the the entertainment uh, but It's funny, like, I, like the last couple of weeks when we've spoken about this, I've been like, you know, it hasn't been as bad or whatever, but now time's going on, you know? And I saw, like, a commercial for Spider-Man and was like, yeah. oh, man, that looks that looks awesome. Speaking of entertainment, did you watch season two of Castlevania? No, man, Damn. I have not. I know, you're, I know. You're terrible. I'm a monster, remember? Yeah. See that now. I know. So it's good? Yeah, yeah. Man, it's really, really good. Like... There's a point, I think it's, and I won't spoil anything, but in the sixth or seventh episode, out of nowhere, like I've been seeing about season one and stuff like that, that I miss, I wish there was Castlevania music, bloody freaking tears start playing. And it's a, it, it's a new version of it. Like you, it's a, like they've clearly remastered it or put their own spin on it, but it, it plays while this huge fight appears. And I was just like in tears almost like, man, that's <laughs> in epic. Tears in tears i could just see him there it's beautiful <laughs> <laughs> i can't wait for you to watch it I, i'm sure you'll be even more of a nerd when that music starts happening oh yeah probably most likely i i, I mean i'm so much of a nerd i actually listen to it on youtube uh, while i'm at work people come in and are like what is that <laughs> and i'm like uh, oh nothing <laughs> i'm like it's uh, it's classical that's right it's classical music yeah, yeah. <laughs> with like a techno backdrop But uh, no, yeah, I want to do that. Uh, I think during lunch today yeah, do uh, is going to be my you first. You actually reviewed to... the first season. You should do the same for the second one. 
Well, like I say, man, uh, everything's coming to an end. I'm not joking. Like, uh, there's really... I don't want to say I'm going to have free time in the next three weeks because I really doubt it. But I'm at the point, like, seriously, I have no readings to do. I have absolutely no readings to do. So once I'm done this with you... I have this, uh, basically there was an eight hour interview and yes, I know eight hours. I got to listen to and take notes of everything my teammates said, and then I got to compile it all into a giant report. So yeah, that's a lot of work. Like that's a shitload of work I got to do, but there's no reading. I keep telling myself that I'm like, I'm so happy (laughs) because the readings take forever take freaking hours so without having to do that even though yes i'm going to be busy and doing work it's not the same you know it's interesting now because it's like you're actually doing projects where you need to analyze companies and say like okay what recommendations would you give and this and that and everything else and that's cool like i'm really looking forward to this so yeah i'm trying to think it's it's still a little early man it's only 40 Oh, that's good. That's good. You want to, you really, you want to leave it like yeah, this? Yeah. yeah, we're fine. Oh, wow. All right, then, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and children of all ages, thank you very much for joining. As always, our podcasts are shoved up on YouTube and other podcasting services as soon as they are recorded. Or they are, well, not or, and they are posted on YouTube every second Sunday. We alternate between Nintendo fanboys and Canadian gamers. And with that, I shall say, have a fantastic week, and we will catch you later. Take care, everyone.